Grade Sevens. It's time for Natural Sciences. So that means I'm Helen and I'm bringing you a lesson today on how electricity is generated or made and supplied. So in our last lesson, we examined the National Electricity Grid and we saw that coal, which is a form of potential chemical energy, is transferred into electrical energy and the transformation or the generation of electricity happens at the power station. The electricity is then transmitted or sent out from the power station to substations and at substations that electricity is distributed and it's distributed across many different consumers or to many different consumers. Maybe you in your house or to your shops, your schools, hospitals and different factories. Now let's see what actually happens inside the power station to generate the electricity. We say electricity is generated in the power station, but we need to also look at a little bit of detail. How is that energy transfer made from coal into electricity? It's not magic. Something happens inside this power station and we need to understand it. Now in South Africa, most of our power stations use coal as the source of energy. So that is what we're going to focus on, how we produce electricity from coal. Now, first of all, the coal has to be mined out of the earth. When we look at the earth and um, beyond in our next section, next term, we will look at mining. The coal is mined and it is transported to the power station. Here we go, here it is being transported. In this case, in large trucks, but sometimes from place to place on trains. And it enters the delivery part of the power station. And here we can see the truck is leaving and it's empty. So here we go, it has piled all its coal up at the power station. What happens inside the power station? Let's break it up and let's look at each part of the process. The first thing is that these large pieces, rocks of coal that have been delivered to the power station are put in what we call a pulverizer. And a pulverizer is going to take the block of coal and it's going to smash it into very fine powder. And this is one of the reasons why it's so dusty and dirty around a power station is because there's lots of coal powder that has got into the air and settled on surfaces as fine black dust. Now the pulverized or the powdered coal gets transported into, look at the way it's going, it's being crushed even further and further and it is being transported to a furnace and in the furnace, which is simply like an enormously hot oven, the coal is burnt. So we can see that we have got a heat energy transfer here from potential energy into heat energy. Now what is that heat energy going to be used to do? Well the thermal energy from the burning coal is going to boil water. So we get water being fed into the system, cold water, and as the cold water moves through the pipes it is going to receive the heat energy and the water is going to turn into steam and oops it was a little bit wrong there it's going to turn into steam the steam is going to turn the blades of a turbine so a turbine 
is a kind of machine that has blades on it that the steam can turn around. Have you ever seen one of those toy windmills? When you blow on it, the little blades turn to make the windmill turn around and it's a lot of fun for little children. Now that's exactly the same idea as what's happening inside the turbine. Instead of blowing air, we've got the steam causing these blades to turn and you can see that the turbine then will spin around and around. But the turbine is connected by a little shaft to the next part of the process which is the generator. Now, our generator has large magnets inside it, and these magnets are inside wire coils. And you're going to learn in high school, if you do physical science, that when you have a magnet inside a wire coil and you spin it around, you're going to generate electricity. And the electricity is going to be passed on to a transformer. And we're going to see that now we can start transmitting the electricity along our power lines. So the electric current that we've generated here in the generator is sent through the power lines and it's on its first part of its journey now to the consumers. So how is that electricity then distributed? Remember there's a difference between the generation or the making of the electricity and the supply of the electricity and the supply is linked to the distribution of electricity. So here we saw our full coal truck bringing the coal and delivering the coal to the power station. Here we can see the pulverized coal being taken up into our furnace. And we're going to see the furnace burning the coal. All of this terrible pollution is being released as a waste product from the burning coal. But the useful energy is the heat that it produces. And inside, we've got big turbines that are going to spin around their blades as the steam is going to turn them. And of course, that is going to cause that magnet inside the generator to spin inside its wire coils and we're going to see that electricity is produced. We have in this building, in this power station, we have taken potential chemical energy, so our energy that is potential energy in the form of our fuel, and we have transferred it into electrical energy in the form of electricity. And now we're ready to transmit that and distribute it. So here's a different view. Here's our power station, all right? And we've got the electricity being generated. And now it is sent out along the power lines. The transmission lines are going to bring that electricity to substations. Now we've been talking about a power station. And now we see that the transmission of electricity is to substations. What is the difference between a power station and a substation? They're both using the word station. Does this mean that the same things happen there? Station simply means exactly the same meaning for if we talk about a train station. It's where the train stops. So 
at stations or substations, it's where the transmission has a little bit of a pause before it is sent on further. And sub means that it is smaller than our power station. At our power station, the electricity is generated. At our substation, the electricity is distributed. Now let's go back to what we understand by the word generated. Generate means to make the electricity. So at the power station, the electricity is made from, or the energy is transferred from, the potential energy of the coal into electrical energy. But we can say that our electricity is made at the power station. At the substation, there's no generation of electricity. We've only got distribution happening. And remember, we said that to distribute means to share between. If I have a packet of sweets and I distribute it amongst 10 grade 7 learners, I would be sharing it out. So the substation now starts sharing out the electricity and it can even share it out to another substation. And maybe some of our electricity goes to another town or another place in the country. Remember, it is a national grid. So our substations have to send out or distribute the electricity right across the country. And here we have another substation and this time this substation is transmitting or distributing our electricity to all of the different houses in our little village or town that we're living in. Remember, it's also going to transmit or distribute some of the electricity to shops, not only to houses, to schools. We're going to see some transmitted to hospitals and other places of service. And we're going to see factories and industries and businesses taking a large portion of that energy distribution. So when we look at electricity production and supply, we can say that we're looking at what happens in our power station and how what is made in the power station, that electricity, is shared amongst all the consumers. And it's these cables and power lines that do the distribution. Something that is a big problem in South Africa is the stealing of these underground cables. This picture shows the cables as being above ground, but we find in most places in South Africa, when we get to an urban settlement, the electricity cables are sent underground, and this is to keep it safer because the electricity cables that might be high above the houses could get damaged, they could get, uh, they could break and they could fall onto the ground and onto cars and where people are walking. So your electricity cables then run underground from a central supply in your village or your town or your municipality to every single house along the road. And if we're going to interrupt that supply, if we're going to steal the cable in one particular part of this big circuit or grid, it means that we're going to cause electrical shutdown or outages for everybody in the area. And what has to happen then is that the municipality has to come out and repair that cable, which is not only wasteful in terms of money, but it's also a very dangerous job. The wiremen that work on the underground cables and on these big power lines do extremely dangerous work and we need to be very aware of the implications of stealing electrical cables. But that's it for today and in our next lesson we'll carry on looking at energy and the national electricity grid. For today, 
Goodbye.